There are certain moments in history that if we live them, we'll never forget. It's winter in the Chicagoland area, and I apparently did not heed my mother's advice of zipping my jacket or wearing a hat, and so I'm sick, sick enough to have to stay home, and my mom feels just bad enough for me to let me curl up in her bed to watch television. And I'm so excited because I'm a total space cadet, and today's space shuttle launch has all sorts of television coverage. You see, a few years ago, I decided that one day I'm going to help launch spaceships, and one day, I'm going to ride a rocket myself. So while I feel lousy, I am psyched because I get to sit as close to the television as I want and I can turn it up extra loud so I feel almost like I'm there. I can't wait to get back to school when I'm feeling better though because everyone in our class will be watching this launch too. It's a special one. Today is January 28th, 1986. I, along with the world, watched as one of the most horrific failures played out on television. Pretty certain I screamed. I know I cried. I had nightmares for months. President Reagan said of the crew that perished that day, the crew of the Space Shuttle Challenger honored us by the manner in which they lived their lives. We will never forget them. I've never forgotten that message. I've never forgotten that these amazing individuals were willing to risk failure, were willing to work, risk everything for something so much bigger than they were, something truly out of this world. Failure, a word so many fear, and a word that in this instance resulted in the ultimate sacrifice. Gene Krantz, during Apollo 13, said, failure is not an option, and NASA's coined the phrase. We as a society have taken it to levels that were beyond what it was ever intended. In its original context, it was meant we had to bring the crew home safely, that failing to do that was not an option. But today, you can find it emblazoned on everything from mugs to t-shirts, to oven mitts. Okay, that one surprised me. Oven mitts? <laughs> Go figure. While failure is never the desired outcome, we must not embrace this failure is not an option attitude. It's through failure that there's growth and progress in revolutionary ways. It's kind of amazing to me that the space program that's inspired so many, myself included, you might have gotten that from the dress, it champions a saying and actively markets something that results in stagnation. Failure. Failure has to be an option. Students especially have to be encouraged to succeed but allowed to fail. We have to force them to get beyond their comfort zone, to do things that are scary. We encourage them to grow how do we do that? We let them do things that are outside the envelope of how they normally operate. It's scary. It is. We live in a world that has become more and more risk averse. Even former NASA acting administrator Robert Lightfoot lamented at the 34th Annual Space Symposium his concern about our current mindset towards risk. He said, I worry if we'd have ever launched the Apollo missions in the environment we're in today. Would we have ever launched the first space shuttle? Think about it. It's not rocket science. Failure has to be an option to grow. And so while it's not rocket science, obviously it certainly applies there too. In the early 60s, when we were trying to, late 50s and early 60s, when we were trying to develop rockets, there were a lot of failures, and some of them were quite spectacular. Has anybody ever watched the movie The Right Stuff? <laughs> Please do. At the beginning, wow, you see some incredible failures. But the engineers took all of their lessons learned from each failure and integrated it into the development of that rocket, and that's what ultimately made it a success. That fail-forward concept was hard at work when we launched Alan Shepard, the first American into space, 
on a Mercury Redstone rocket on May 5th, 1961. But today, we see parents preventing their children from failing. It's the everyone makes the team mentality, participation trophies, and gold stars for everybody. And while that's appropriate in certain circumstances, where do students learn how to cope and grow when they fail, as opposed to being beaten down? How do they learn, that, like the song says, and don't worry, I'm not gonna sing it because I do not have the skills that Rachel does, to pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and start all over again. We have to encourage them to succeed, but allow them to fail. Because failure is an option. It's inevitable. Studies by psychological science have shown that there is no link between parents' beliefs about intelligence and their children's beliefs about intelligence. However, there is a link between parents' attitudes about failure and their kids' perception of intelligence. So if a parent has a really negative attitude about failure, students are gonna very quickly become more concerned with their performance than the actual learning. Parents that feel that failure is debilitating, they pass on that feeling towards kids. But the study also showed that when parents feel that overcoming obstacles is a great teacher and is empowering, they pass that on to students as well. So failure, I'm gonna be honest with you, it was one of those things that coming up here today, I wasn't sure how this was gonna go. I thought, well, maybe that's the most poignant thing that could happen. I could fall down on my face and do a, I keep joking, I'll do a somersault and, and we'll move on. But that's what you have to do. Think about it, when we were kids, we'd build with Lincoln Logs and Tinker Toys and Legos, and sometimes our buildings would fall down, and you learned from it. You integrated those new thoughts into the problem solving, and you start all over a little bit wiser. So we, as society, need to look at these studies that were done about parents, because the reality is, we're all stewards of the next generation. We need to encourage them Luckily, right now in the space industry, we have this great commercial wave that is sweeping the industry, and we're seeing a change in the failure is not an option attitude. Space entrepreneur Chris Lewicki said, when failure is not an option, success becomes very expensive. And he doesn't just mean in terms of dollars and cents. There are huge societal costs when we run away from something that's challenging because of fear of failure. Right now, we're kind of in a new space race. There are commercial companies vying to take people like all of you into space. There's lots of new rockets and spacecraft. In fact, one flew a test flight this morning. And these entrepreneurs understand that while failure is not the desired outcome, sometimes it's gonna happen. And that is how progress happens. That's how progress is made when you fail forward. Revolutionary growth happens from things like this. So the correlation between space the space program and students are two things kids are always excited about, space and dinosaurs. So I hope that we as a community can start to embrace that sometimes failure must be an option. We must be willing to stretch. We must be willing to fly right on the edge of our envelope, as pilots say. And yes. Sometimes failure comes at a huge cost, as it did with Challenger. And failure like that is tragic and scary, especially to a young girl who has never seen failure with such dire consequences. I was very fortunate that my mother talked to me about it. We had great conversations. I think she was afraid I'd give up on my dream of space after Challenger. We as society have to have healthy conversations about failure. What does failure mean? When is it acceptable? How do we move forward? Because failure is always an option. But we only truly fail when we don't learn and grow from these experiences. So I want to encourage all of you to encourage your students, be they eight or 80, to be willing 
to go out there and risk in huge ways and be willing to risk failing spectacularly. Go forth and do out of this world things.